want to say a big thank you to Valspar and Scotch for sponsoring this video. We are now in video eight of the Outdoor Kitchen Build Series. If you want to get caught up, then all of the videos are linked for you down in the description below. But this week, it is all about painting. I've put in so much time and effort to get it this far. Now, how do I finish it off with the details to make it look outstanding and last longer? Let me give you 25 painting tips to get the best results possible and how to not let this happen. <laughs> Maybe wear a face shield? The first category of tips is all about surface preps. You first need to go through and fill in all cracks and holes. Some people try to do this with paint, but it's not gonna give you the results that you want. For exterior jobs, I like DAP's Platinum Patch because it's weatherproof and works with just about in any exterior material, wood, plastic, composites, even concrete. Instead of having three or four fillers on hand, I only need one. Don't only look for low spots in wood, but also any joints such as on my post, which is made up of four boards. Or if you have a monster like I did on the bottom side of a beam, instead of filling it in, cover it up. I nailed up a one by four on the bottom side, puttied the joint, and now with paint, you can't even tell I had a monster or did a cover up job. After letting putty dry, you just sand it a bit to get it knocked down flush with the surface. The stealth mask I'm wearing far exceeds requirements for safety on protecting lungs, filtering down to a 0.03 micron. When you're sanding wood filler, also rough up smooth surfaces like PVC trim you'll get much better adhesion. A few quick passes with 120 grit is all it takes. You can definitely do it by hand, but I grab my palm sander to make it quicker. I definitely recommend picking up a pack of Diablo sand net for this. When it seems to get clogged, you just have to take it off, give it a few shakes against something, then you're ready to go again. This is such a simple thing, but it makes a difference. You wanna ease sharp corners. Think of paint as a sheet of plastic film. That's really what it is. Sharp corners create a weak spot where the film will eventually break open. If you slightly round the sharp edges with sandpaper, it eliminates that weak spot. It might seem tedious, but it really only takes a few swipes. After sanding, clean up all surfaces. Getting rid of dust and grit allows your painter's tape and your paint to adhere better. I've had my Greenworks blower on hand for this entire project, so I use that to blast away the dust, then follow it up with a brush or rag. Caulk everything, even the smallest gaps. Gaps shrink and swell with changes in temperature and humidity. Paint does not handle this movement and will eventually crack, let in moisture and lead to peeling paint. The two things that matter most in sealant are strong adhesive and long-term flexibility. DAP Dynaflex Ultra is excellent for both. Plus, it's paint ready in about an hour. But the big tip here is to cut a small tip. Cut the smallest hole possible when caulking and you'll save yourself so much waste and extra cleanup. The next collection of tips is step two of painting, which is masking off. Don't use cheap painter tape. Spend a couple bucks more to get tape that will stay in place now and come off later without damaging the surface, leaving behind a residue or tearing to shreds as you remove it. If you're gonna roll on paint, use wider tape to protect nearby surfaces, such as the rafters here in my case. Scotch Blue Original is my choice for general purpose masking. I'll also skip ahead slightly to painting to show you what I mean. If I use narrow tape, the roller would get paint on the rafters. If you're using a brush, then narrow is just fine. On areas open to the sun and rain, I use Scotch Exterior Painter's Tape, which is made from poly rather than paper and has a strong weatherproof adhesive. So unlike standard tapes, it stays put through rain and doesn't break down with sunlight exposure. I needed to tape off the concrete to paint the post boxes. So I first lined the post with the weatherproof tape, but then used the 3M hand masker and advanced masking film to protect them. The system is super fast and easy because it automatically applies tape to paper or sheeting. And the film is charged with static cling, so it hugs surfaces and stays in place. Be sure to bed the tape with a putty knife for good adhesion. Another tip for a putty knife is at inside corners, use it to create a neat square tear. Most tapes don't stick well to rough surfaces like concrete, stone, or texture ducking. Duct tape kind of works, but I found something better. Scotch makes a rough surface tape, especially for these hard to mask surfaces such as my stone. Or when I went to mask off my mistake hoop straps, I grabbed the heavy duty masking tape, which is orange. 
I can't have my souvenirs getting paint on them. That would be a mistake on top of a mistake. You can't mask yourself, but supposedly, if you put on lotion, it will make paint wash off the skin easier. I actually read this tip and I don't think it's gonna work, so we'll see. Okay, now a collection of tips relating to the actual painting phase. To round up paint and primer, I went to Lowe's.com and chose the Valspar products I needed. Then I just picked them up curbside at the store. Incredibly fast and easy. If you're a busy pro, you should also check out the Valspar Pro offerings where you can get linked up with a dedicated rep and access business services like order tracking and management tools. Knots and ink on lumber can and will bleed through paint, especially if you're going with something light. To prevent that, I like to spot prime these areas with the stain blocker before priming. Valspar Stain Blocking Primer seals in stains so that they won't come back to haunt me. It's also great for glossy surfaces that other products won't stick to. Another way of getting rid of the ink is to plane it off. The Triton Mini Planner takes off stamps in just a few passes. On new surfaces, it's smart to prime everything, even if you're using a paint and primer in one. By the way, the best primers are usually 100% acrylic formulas, like Valspar's Exterior Primer Sealer. Oh, and don't be surprised if your prime coat reveals some low spots you didn't catch in the putty stage. Another way of doing things is to actually prime first to reveal all the low spots and then putty. My top coat will be white, so I stuck with a white primer, but if you're going with any other color, ask the folks at the paint store to tint your primer gray. You'll be amazed at how much easier it is to cover up gray primer than white, saving you on not only paint costs, but also painting time. If the prime coat is a little rough when dry, give it a quick sanding before you paint. A quick wipe with some sandpaper and a scrap block is all it takes to get rid of nubs and whiskers. Scraping paint is one of the worst jobs on earth, so choosing paint that will last is worth some extra time and money. Aside from long-term durability, you'll get better coverage and less fading over time. I don't wanna repaint anytime soon, so I chose Valspar Duramax paint. If you're in a hurry to cover large areas, roll and back brush. A roller is the fastest way to get paint on surfaces, but a brush is smoother. By tag teaming it, you get both things. One person can do it, or it works great if you have a helper, then each of you can take a job. Avoid painting in the sun. Warm sunshine makes for a happy pup and chicken, but it makes paint dry faster, which leads to brush marks and poor adhesion. And definitely, two coats are better than one. Aside from better coverage, a thicker buildup of paint is less porous and more elastic meaning it's gonna last longer. Okay, now that it's been a little bit, let's wash off the paint and see if that other tip actually works. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe this tip does work, guys. It does. That, all right, that's pretty good. Now let's finish off with some finishing tips. The best tip ever, at least in my opinion, is how to spin clean a roller. Also a tip is if you spin it down instead of up, more splatter will stay inside of the bucket instead of on your face. That is a crazy cool trick. <laughs> I think you can, you can feel how dry it is. Look at that. Can you see how fluffy that is? That's so cool. <laughs> Before you spin clean it though, it's worth picking up one of these tools to have on hand to get as much paint out of the roller as possible before you take water to it. Before removing painter's tape, slice along the tape with a utility knife. Otherwise, you'll tear the paint film and end up with a jagged paint line. Also, when you're pulling off tape, the angle of the pull matters. Start at about a 45 degree angle. If the tape isn't coming off easily and cleanly, try a 90 degree angle instead. And most people don't know this, but painter's tapes come with the time ratings like five days or 14 days. This tells you how long you can leave the tape in place and still expect it to come off easily without leaving residue behind. If you ever leave tape on too long and run into trouble, a little heat will probably do the trick. Just grab a hair dryer. Now I just wanna show you the before and afters of the space. All of the detailed work involved in painting is time consuming and tedious, but man, it makes such a big difference to a project. I know it's super easy to wanna to rush through it or to put things off or to take the easy route on this, but just remember all of these small tips, they do make a difference. If you put in the time and effort up front when you're doing it, then you'll save yourself time in the long run by not having to repeat it as soon or maybe at all. Invest in the good materials that's gonna hold up, that have a proven good name, and hopefully some of the tips I gave you make it go a little bit smoother for you. Leave me a comment down below if I've missed some of your favorite painting tips, and don't forget that I've linked to all the products that I use and recommend down in the description. 
That's it for this one, guys. I hope that you're enjoying this series and I will see you on my next one. If you have been wanting to make a rocking chair, then I have templates for this design right here. Or if you go to my website, I have templates for tons of other projects as well.